So uh, we know that panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and uh, generalized anxiety disorder, or SAD, PD, and uh, GAD, are very common disorders inflicting uh, many, many people uh, around the globe. It's uh, important to realize that anxiety is not one thing, but it's actually a whole spectrum of conditions. They can be scared of social environments, physical responses in their body that can make them panic, or they can be scared for spiders, for instance, or very specific um, things in their environment that can still be very debilitating. So people with an anxiety disorder often experience um, a lot of physiological arousal. So their heart rate goes up, and they start sweating, um, and often they avoid um, situations in which they might be confronted with the things that they're afraid of. And sometimes people, for instance, might lock themselves up at home, and um, it can be very debilitating. Um, what's also important for anxiety disorders is that it often starts at a young age, and because of that, it's often when people are in the bloom of their life, <laughs> and um, when they're working and they have many social relationships, and that um, combined results in a, a stronger debilitating effect of anxiety disorders. And some people, of course, in adolescent, it tends to um, to become a less of a burden, but in many others it continues throughout life. Challenges that are, I think, are can be found in other disorders as well, but that are um, particularly relevant for anxiety disorders is that there is a lot of comorbidity. It's a typical pattern for anxiety disorders to not have only one anxiety disorder present, but at least one other. Uh, so that poses another problem in terms of disentangling what's going on in, in the brain and trying to um, also um, associate this with, for instance, genetic influences, this type of overlap you're having between anxiety disorders. People with an anxiety disorder often also suffer from depression at some point in their life or suffer from substance abuse, for instance, start drinking alcohol to um, alleviate their anxiety. So this might also have effects on the brain, so then it makes it, again, very difficult to decide whether something is really associated with the anxiety disorder or with some of the other symptoms that are also experienced by the people who suffer from those conditions. Uh, and although these are very common disorders, there's not um, that much known about their neurobiology, you can argue. On one hand, you can say that there's a lot known based on animal models, but animal models do particularly have a focus on uh, fear and not necessarily on anxiety. And fear, of course, we all recognize and is easily mod uh, is modeled in animals, but it's different from uh, anxiety. And for instance, in anxiety, um, if you look at anxiety research, there's less available in terms of animal models than there's in, in the terms of fear models. So there are, apart from the animal models, other ways to look into the neurobiology of anxiety disorders. And obviously, one of these is neuroimaging. There have been many MRI studies during the, uh, the past years, uh, often in smaller samples, and they point at, of course, the involvement of specific brain, brain circuitry um, involving the amygdala as the brain's alarm center, but also, of course, uh, higher cortical areas regulating the reactivity of the amygdala and responses to external stimuli. So this has been kind of a global picture emerging from the anxiety research so far. Uh, of course, we should note that there's also an important developmental uh, part of it, as I just mentioned, in terms of the, um, uh, the debut of uh, anxiety disorders. Uh, but then if you look at the, the study so far in general, you see a kind of, this kind of picture emerging, but also a lot of un unanswered questions. For instance, amygdala findings in the several disorders go one way and then go another. So amygdala is certainly involved, but we're not sure about, for instance, whether the volume is definitely reduced or not, or whether there is an increased sensitivity to uh, external stimuli. We want to disentangle what's specific to anxiety in general, what's specific to panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, or social anxiety disorder, what are the influences of medication, for instance? Um, what are the developmental trajectories? Uh, in order to answer all those uh, questions, you need uh, bigger numbers where you can really dissect uh, 
these two issues. So there are many open questions um, and if that clearly underlines the need for something like an Enigma initiative where we pull together a lot of different sites. Uh, we've now reached a total of 60 uh, to see whether uh, specific findings done in smaller studies are being replicated in larger ones. And why is this important? Well, of course, you want to come up with at least the essence of, let's say, the brain circuitry involved in anxiety disorders. So you can then build on that to further disentangle, for instance, developmental um, aspects of the disorders. Mm -hmm.